So I hope you're doing well today. It's very humid up here where I am, and that always throws me off a little, but I'll try and keep it together. Um, just so you know, the warehouse uh, is a nonprofit, so if you are so inclined, there is a donate button on the page where you can make a donation to the Warehouse Arts Center. It's a community arts center. We do a lot of good stuff there. So if you're so inclined, we would appreciate it. And um, let's get started. My name is Trisha, by the way. I always forget to say that. Uh, but today I remembered, miraculously, we're gonna start in a comfortable seated position. If you have a block, you can go ahead and grab it and put it behind you. Uh, we're gonna do a supported bridge position later in the series. So go ahead and grab that. If you don't have a block, then you can grab a rolled up blanket or um, an extra mat, whatever, okay? So, deep out breath, let it go out the mouth. Coming to center, allowing yourself to be here for this hour of self-care. So this is your time to take care of yourself bringing the calm into center and actually finding the center, the calm in the center and letting it expand outward. All right, so taking some deep breaths in, a couple of full exhales through the mouth just to start. Remember, you can exhale longer than you think you can, more than likely. One more breath in and out the mouth. And then we're gonna continue to breathe in and out the nose for the rest of the series, if possible. If you need to take an audible exhale every once in a while out the mouth, that's fine. But the nose in, breathing in the nose and out the nose keeps the body calmer. So. On the next exhale, let your chin drop to the chest, head bows forward, feeling the stretch in the back of the neck, maybe down into the shoulder blades as well. Inhale the head back to neutral. And take a look to the right. Nice and easy. Don't force that rotation through center to the left. See where your range of motion is today. Again, through center to the right. And through center to the left. Coming back to center, this time taking the ear towards the shoulder. <clears throat> Might not go far on this stretch. So just take it right to that point where you feel a nice stretch, not too intense. Just the pull of the muscle on the opposite side. Coming through center to the other side. Let's do that again through center. So if you're taking your right ear to your right shoulder, take your right hand and just place it on top of the left shoulder, near the, um, where the neck and shoulder meet. And just give a little massage on that levator muscle and the upper trap. That will help loosen that lateral flexion of the cervical spine. Coming back to center, Taking it to the other side. So if you're going left, left hand crosses the body, resting on the right levator muscle, levator scapula. It lifts the scapula up. So we wanna pressure it. Just stimulate a little blood flow by pressing down on that muscle. The pressure stimulates your body to send blood to that area. So that's nice. Coming back to center, inhaling the arms up high, looking up between the hands. 
But remember, you're lifting up and out of the shoulders, right? You're not kinking the back of the neck. So really get used to that extension, that crown lifts to the heaven. Taking the right hand down and taking a side stretch, a half moon modification. So it doesn't matter if you go right or left with me, as long as you do both sides equally. If I try doing the mirror thing, I'll get all screwed up and then no one will be happy. Coming through center, taking it to the other side. So arm comes up, right arm comes up, lifting up and out of the waist. So you wanna collapse, lifting up. So you're always stretching that hara line, elongating the hara line, the root tube crown connection. Let's do that again, coming through center. Feel the that's a lateral flexion of the spine. One more time, coming through center, taking it to the left. This time coming through center, taking a rotation. So we're rotating that, the spinal column, the spinal muscles into rotation, coming through center to the other side. Keep the breath going through center to the other side. So this right side is where you rotate and try and grab something in your back seat, even though you know you shouldn't be doing that. And that's an easy time to pull something because I've done it myself instead of just waiting till I get out of the car and going and getting it in the back seat. No, I can do it. And then it's like, oh. So those rotation, those muscles that are involved in rotation, especially in the low back, can be a little sketchy sometimes through center to the other side. Breathe in, complete exhale. Coming back to center, inhale the arms up. Take the palms to the shoulder blades. So we're stretching the triceps, which take the el from the elbow to the shoulder. Triceps, three heads, attachment at the shoulder. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, hollow out through the center, let the head bow, elbows come down, keeping the hands in contact with the back. Inhaling back up. Prayer hands reach up to the heart center. Inhale. And on the exhale, bowing the head down. Coming back to center, switching positions, hands towards the front of the mat, into tabletop, cat cow, so crown and tail lift, stomach slings on the inhale. See if you can get the creases of the elbows to face each other. And then on the exhale, pulling it in, crown and tail drop, that's the cat portion. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Your own pace here. Feel the movement of the spine. Getting to know yourself better through all of these movements, these poses, these positions, the breath. One more round after the round you're on. When you're done with that, sinking back into Balasana or Child's Pose, keep those elbows lifted, hairline on the mat. <clears throat> Walk the hands as far forward as you can onto the fingertips. And then take the upper body and the hands and the arms to the right, another lateral flexion of the spine with the body in a different position. Stretching the left side. Breathe into the stretch, active arms, active shoulders. Walk it back to center and to the left. So hips are neutral, 
taking from the waist all the way to the fingertips and stretching the side body. Walking it back to center, let the elbows drop, palms are flat, hips come up, head drops, random movements into the lower body. So waking up the hip joint, the lower back, circles can feel good, the glutes and the posterior hip. Uh, is the thickest muscle mass in the body, so it takes some time to get warmed up. Random movements, listen to your body, what feels good. Tucking the toes under into puppy dog pose, so stretching the bottom of the feet, reaching forward with the hands. Stretching through the side bodies again, stretching the bottom of the feet. Now let the uh, forearms drop down, go into Balasana. Let's take the arms alongside the body. Bring some movement into the fingers and palms, circling the wrists. Arms reach forward again, coming back into a tabletop position. Right leg reaches back, holding on to it. Take a few breaths here, just holding that leg position. Don't let that hip open up. You want to keep a neutral hip. One more breath here. Then bringing the right knee down, left leg reaches back. <clears throat> Head is in line with the spine, so I like to keep looking between my hands. Rather than lifting it, I want you to stretch that crown towards the front of the mat, beyond the front of the mat. Inhaling, exhaling. One more breath. Taking the knee down, sinking back into child's pose, arms alongside the body. Arms reach back, forward, <clears throat> tucking the toes under, downward dog. Remember, if downward dog doesn't work for you, you can um, do an active puppy dog pose or a child's pose as well. So if you're in downward dog, pedaling out the heels one at a time, breathing into it. So we're weight bearing, the upper body's doing some weight bearing here. Just be respectful. Let's take the left heel towards the mat, extend the spine, and come up onto the ball mount of the right foot, bending the knee. Eventually the left heel flat, maybe not today. Next week, next year, next life. Switching, pressing the right heel down. Feel the ball mound of the left foot gently on the mat. See if you can feel each toe touching the mat. Doing that one more time, left heel presses down, right heel goes to the ceiling. See if you can feel the entirety of the, the ball mound and the toes of the right foot especially, lightly touching the mat, one more time switching. Coming up high on the ball mounds, maybe narrowing the stance front to back a little, bending the knees, chest drops towards the thighs, extending the back. Dropping into child's pose if it gets too much on the upper body. And then let's take your knees down, sink back again, arms alongside the body. Taking a couple of breaths here, bringing the body back to center, letting the muscles come back to neutral. Roll the wrists. Taking it into downward facing dog again. Taking the heels up high. Rotating the heels to the right, 
then dropping them towards the mat, keeping the shoulders and upper body as neutral as possible. Coming through center, heels up, rotating to the left. One more time on to each side. And if you want, you can drop the upper body down to add intensity if you're ready for that. Through center, rotating the heels left. Pedaling the feet out, walking the feet towards the front of the mat. Ending up in an easy forward fold. Bent knees, chest towards the thighs. Head relaxes down, hugging behind the legs, making yourself as compact as possible, stretching the glutes, compressing the hip flexors right at the crease of the hip. Taking it into monkey pose, half lift, flat back, inhale. Back down on the exhale. Half lift, flat back, monkey pose. And back down. Let's take the interlaced fingers up towards the ceiling. If that doesn't work for you, you can rest them on the back. Or keep the hands on the mat. But if you can do this, you can pull the shoulders open. Stretching the pecs. Let's take a flat back while we're doing that. You don't have to straighten the knees. See if you can extend the spine in this position. Back down, release the arms, rolling up to stand. Taking the arms up, I'm gonna turn towards you. You can stay facing the front of your mat. Prayer hands up high, stretching through the side bodies, a little side to side movement here. And taking it to the right, half moon. And again, if you want to take, grab that wrist and accentuate it, feel free. Like I said before, some of us need to struggle and do that. And some of us, the challenge is not struggling and just taking the stretch where we feel it. Coming through center, inhaling, up and out of the waist. And to the left. Through center, to the right again. Feel which muscles are working. What is holding this position? Getting to know yourself. Through center to the other side. Coming back through center, letting the arms float down. Pedal out the knees. Good morning. All right, roll the shoulders back. Nice, we're at the front of the mat here. Couple more knee bends. Inhaling up. Exhaling over. Taking the left leg back, dropping the knee down into a low lunge, lifting. Cactus arms. Coming back up, hands float down, hips shift back, front toes lift. Maybe the leg straightens and eventually the knee, head comes to the knee. Your pose, your practice, your body. I'm your guide, your body's a better guide. While you're in this position, take the left hip, rotate it back, right hip rotating forward. And you're in a good stretch on the left low back when you do that. Hips come back to neutral, lifting into low lunge again, opening to the left, stretching the arms out. One line of energy from fingertip to fingertip right through the heart center. Coming back to center again, prayer hands to the heart, rotating to the right.
back to center. Hands come down, back toes tuck under, lift the back knee, left hand plants, right arm reaches. I hear footsteps. Right hand comes down, hello Marley, stepping forward into easy forward fold, let the head relax, half lift, flat back. Back down, this time right leg reaches back, dropping the knee down, low lunge, other side. Cactus arms. Back up, hands float down on either side of the foot, hips shift back, toes lift. Finding a good stretch here. Maybe the leg straightens, maybe the head comes to the knee. And again, if you want to take that right hip, rotate it back, left hip rotating forward. Hips come back to neutral, low lunge. Rotating to the right, Towards the back leg, opening through the chest and the arms. Back to center, prayer hands to the heart, inhaling and rotating, uh, sorry, left towards the front leg. Back to center. Hands float down, back toes tuck, stay in the high lunge, right arm plants, left arm reaches. So practice, practice, practice. Getting to know all these positions. Left hand comes down, step the feet together. Let the head hang heavy. How often do you say that during the day? Probably not too much. Inhale, flat back. Back down, stepping into downward facing dog. Pedaling it out, opening the feet wide. Knees are bent. Right hand plants, left arm reaches. Too much, keep the knees bent and the hips high. More intensity, you can drop the hips, straightening the legs. Left hand down, come to center, take a breath. Left side, keep the knees bent, left hand plants. Everything opens to the right, everything is turning to the right. Toes, knees, hips, chest, head. Right hand down, paddle it out. Coming down into a plank or a modified plank. Dropping the knees down. Coming down onto the forearms here. Making sure your elbows are right under your shoulders. Forearms are down, palms are down. Let that head hang heavy for a breath. So legs are together, tops of the feet down, sphinx pose. So we're gonna engage the thighs, but keep the tops of the feet down. And on an inhale, lifting up, exhale, relax. Let the head relax down. Again, inhaling into sphinx pose, back down, two more. Inhale, so we're extending the spine. Relax down, exhale, kind of goose lip there. One more time, holding on to it. And let the front body come down to the mat, right ear on the mat. Toes fall together, heels fall open. 
arms by your side. Head comes to center, tucking the chin, arms come out like Superwoman. On inhale, you're gonna take the right leg back and up, left arm forward and up. Breathing into it, back down. Opposite side, left foot, or left leg back and up, right arm forward and up. So you're extending out first, then lifting. Back down with the head even. One more time each side. Inhale, lift, right leg, left arm. Back down. Other side, left leg, right arm. Back down, arms alongside the body, opposite ear on the mat. And take a couple of breaths. We're gonna take the arms out from the shoulders. Full locust here. We're gonna take the chin, tuck it down. On an inhale, everything's gonna rise. So inhale, lifting up. Everything lifts like you're flying, maybe just the hip bones on the mat eventually. Slowly coming down, opposite ear on the mat. We'll do that a second time. Head back to neutral. On an inhale, lift everything up. Really using the spinal muscles here. So yeah, it might not be completely comfortable. Coming back down, opposite ear on the mat, arms alongside the body, bend the knees, feet up, and let the lower legs go side to side. Open the knees towards the side or open the legs. Bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet together Chin comes to neutral, tucked though. Arms come out. So you can open the knees as wide as you like. Breathing into it. Hands come back in, knees come back in. Extend the legs back out, lifting into child's pose for a breath to stretch out the back. Coming into tabletop, taking it into cat position to round the back, really round, dropping the hips, dropping the crown. Tucking the toes under, lifting into down dog. Hopping or walking the feet to the front of the mat, head relaxes. Half lift. Back down. Half lift, arms come out, dropping the chest to the thighs. Arms reach up. If you want to interlace again, see how it feels a little later in the series. Feel free. And then we're going to lift the chest as the arms release, swinging through into chair position. Remember, you want the weight slightly into the heels and chair, eventually knees right over the ankles. So you don't want the knees up here. You want to take the hips back. Prayer hands come to the heart. Inhale. Rotating to one side. Don't let those knees separate and one jut forward. Keep the hips and the legs as one unit. Hips are neutral. Back into chair position. Prayer hands back down to the heart. Take it to the other side. Taking it back to center, into chair. Straighten legs, arms come down, pedal it out. Taking a quarter turn, wide angle stance. Get our warriors in. Right toes turn, inhale, arms up, bending into warrior two. So I've noticed I've gotten a little lax with some of my poses because I'm always seeing them on video now. So. Just ask yourself, are you going to that comfortable point again where you're not even really aware? Or are you feeling the entire range of motion? Take the focus over the front fingers. 
knee tracking right over the front foot. Maybe you can take it another inch into the pose. So we're looking forward over the front fingers, looking kind of in the future, so to speak. Let's turn the head looking behind, symbolically looking at what was and then bringing it through center back to the future. Good things for everybody, hopefully. Inhale, reach. Looking up, prayer hands, straighten legs, shifting gaze, back down. Again. Back down, exhaling. Extended side angle. Back to warrior two, reverse. Warrior two, still looking, what is ahead? Arms drop, legs straighten, toes rotate, right into the other side, left toes turn. Checking your alignment every once in a while, don't get on autopilot, making sure you're still aligned properly to keep things safe for yourself, your body. Maybe an inch down. Looking over the left fingers, let's turn the head, look behind. Wave to what was, coming back to center. Looking towards the future again, extended side angle. Warrior two, reverse, outside edge of that back foot, really pressuring into the mat. Warrior two. Arms drop, legs straighten, toes rotate. Walk the feet together to paddle out the hips, bringing the hips back to neutral. Yeah, roll the shoulders back. Nice, turning to the front of the mat, in the middle of the mat. Let's just take that right leg up, <clears throat> flexing the hip, flexing the ankle, flexing the knee. Bring prayer hands up high. To the heart center. Right leg down, finding balance on the right leg, flexing hip, knee, dorsal flexion of the, the ankle. So flexing it, inhaling the arms up high. Prayer hands to the heart. Back down, you guys stay forward. We're gonna go into tree pose. So taking the right leg up, the knee up onto the ball mount, rotating right hip opens, piriformis shortening, deep lateral rotators. That's the muscle that goes right over the sciatic nerve. So if you have periodic pain down the leg, it might be your sciatic um, nerve being pressed by the piriformis. Find your foot position in tree. You can kickstand it, calf, upper thigh, or half lotus if you choose. This feels good to me today. Root to crown really helps up and down. You gotta keep that car line really straight and lifted. Steady gaze also helps prayer hands to the heart. Branches grow if you choose. My eyes went up, so I'm gonna take my gaze up, finding my balance, maybe bringing prayer hands and in interlacing. One line of energy here, harder to balance when the eyes come up. So if you want a challenge, don't compromise the rest of the pose and don't contract the posterior neck muscles. Prayer hands back down to the heart. Three, release. Whew, 
All right, other side, left knee up, left knee opens, rotating that left hip, external rotation. This is internal rotation, we're externally rotating, shortening the piriformis, find your foot position. Maybe, and hopefully it's the same on both sides to keep things balanced. Prayer hands come to the heart center. Branches can grow if you choose. Maybe they take the gaze up. Take it to wherever you need to take it today. One line of energy. If your prayer hands are up high. Feel solid on that right foot. Prayer hands back down to the heart. Trees release. Nice. Pedaling it out, turning towards the front. Oh, I'm sorry. You're already facing the front. So left toes out 45, right foot steps forward. We're into a warrior one position. 45 degrees on the back foot. Not 90, 45. Each foot in its own track. Lifting into warrior one. Chest lifted. Prayer hands come to the heart. Front leg straightens. Don't let that left hip pull back. Neutral hips here. If you need to take them and feel them, go ahead. Inhale. On an exhale, hinging at the hips. Taking your stretch. Maybe you can get the head all the way down to the knee. Inhaling back up. Warrior one. Prayer hands to the heart. Step the feet together. Breath. Into the other side, right leg back. 45 on the right leg, not on a balance beam. Remember, keep your feet in their own tracks. Bending into warrior one. Right hip pulls forward, left hip shifted back just a little, keeping the hips neutral. Plant that back foot, feel the heel pressing in. Weight is even on both legs here. There tends to be an inclination to bring it forward. Really press that back foot in and that will help you balance the weight. Prayer hands to the heart. Straighten the front leg, pull that right hip forward, inhale, and exhale, hinging at the hips. Feet in solid contact here. Inhale back up into warrior one. Right hip pulling forward, prayer hands to the heart, stepping forward, feet together, pedal it out, inhaling, reach, this time looking between the hands, take it into a forward fold, take it into downward facing dog. We're going to do three-legged dog into pigeon pose. Remember, you can always do a reclined pigeon if you choose. All right, you don't want any pain in the knees during pigeon pose or anything else. So let's take three-legged dog first, taking the right leg back. Neutral hips here. Haven't turned the hip yet, right? Then as you kick the leg up, the hip opens to the right. External rotation again, by the way. Stacking the hips. Bending the right leg if you choose. If you want to flip the dog, you may, if you know that works for you. Kicking the right leg back up to the ceiling, stacked hips still. Now as we bring it back, neutral hips again, bringing the knee forward, right foot to the left side of the mat, right knee towards the right wrist, drop the back knee, and drop the hips down gently. Maybe you need to stay here while you get acclimated. I am having a cramping right foot today. 
Not sure why. So pigeon pose, for those of you in pigeon pose, go ahead and find your pigeon pose for today. Maybe you keep the upper body up, or maybe you wanna bring it down and rest on the forearms. I'm gonna show you the recline pigeon option in case that would be on the back knees bent, right leg crosses over left, reaching through the figure four and bringing that left interlace grip behind the left thigh, left leg can stretch up. So that's your modification for pigeon. So really feel that, well, you probably are feeling it. It's hard not to feel it. That's a good stretch for that piriformis muscle that I talk about incessantly. So breathing into this intense hip stretch. Not a comfortable pose, but one of the poses that's helped my knees the most. But you have to be super respectful of the process of opening up the hips and it takes time, it takes a lot of time and practice, practice, practice. Two more deep breaths. And if your body is not lifted, go ahead and lift it up, tucking the back toes under. And as that knee creeps forward, walk the knee forward <clears throat> Taking the hips up, we're back into down dog. A couple of pedals out here, left leg up, neutral hips. Then lift the leg to the ceiling, stacking the hips, shoulders are square. Eventually right heel down. If you wanna bend that knee, go ahead. Taking the leg back up, hips are still stacked, open. Now the hip comes to neutral, the knee comes through. Into pigeon on the other side. Finding your pose for today. Taking it wherever you need to take it. You can always use a bolster if you have one, right? It's very comfortable. Another option for pigeon. Let me see. Is it this way? No. It's to take and twist through the upper body. We'll go into that next time. Breathing deeply. Remember you can send your breath to an area just by thinking about it with intention. Send the breath to the hip maybe. Taking the body back up, palms down, and then tuck the back toes under, walk that knee forward, and then lifting it back up into downward facing dog. Dropping the knees down, we're going to come on, you're going to come onto your knees, face the long side of the mat, centered pretty much right in the center here. Take the right leg out parallel to the short end of the mat. Um, hopefully you have a layer or two. I'm on carpet and a mat, so I'm good, but you don't want that knee to hurt. So if you need an extra layer of mat under, you can either fold the mat or perhaps you have one. Right hand drops down onto the right leg. Left arm reaches up, inhale. And on an exhale, taking that side stretch. Coming through center. Now, sorry, I should have told you, you could have a block here if you need it. Sorry. Left hand down, right arm reaches, and then take a stretch. If it's too much, you can put a block down to raise the floor, so to speak. Coming back up, that can be a 
kind of a funky lift there, taking another side stretch. Coming back to center, right leg comes in, other side, left leg reaches, left hand down, right arm raises, inhale and on the exhale, take it to the left. Coming through, if you need the block, go ahead and grab it. Hand can come down, taking the left arm, reaching. If you really want to pigeon toe that right foot, or sorry, the left foot, and that will intensify the stretch if you need that. Coming back up, this is gate pose. Arms drop, knee comes back in. Let's turn back towards the front of the mat and have a seat on the mat. This is where we're going to go into a supported bridge pose. So go ahead and grab your block. If you don't have a block, you can just do bridge pose on your own. Uh, bent knees, feet about hip width apart. You can either bring that uh, roll to the side and go onto your back or taking the arms forward rolling down, hollowing out, using the stomach muscles to take a slow ride down, chin to the chest, trying not to use the neck muscles, that's the challenge there. Uh, get yourself spaced out here. Let's take, bring the block by the side, let's take a couple of breaths just so you can get acclimated to the body down position, corpse pose, two breaths. Relaxing the jaw. Knees bend, hip width apart, and your heel is about two of your foot lengths from the sit bones. Have your block ready, palms down, Peeling the tailbone off, first going into a bridge position without the block. If it feels good, you can shimmy the shoulders under, interlacing the fingers. Feet solidly on the mat, even. Don't let the weight splay to, or go to one side or let the knees splay out. Keep the knees right in line with the hips and the feet and the ankles. Now, release the arms. Grab the block. Remember the block can be at any height, depending on your ability here in bridge. I'd like to take it on the highest setting because for me, I'm pretty flexible in the back. And it's right on the sacrum, which is the flat bone at the back of the spine. You don't want it in the lumbar area. That's not going to feel good. But if you get it right between the lumbar and the tailbone on that sacrum, it is, should feel pretty good. And again, the block can be at any height. Just let the tissue melt around the block so you're getting some good myofascial release on that tissue. And again, just like we were pressuring onto the shoulder, the blood will go to that area. Same here, we're really, the weight of the hips is pressing into all those sacral attachments, one of which is the piriformis, by the way. You can stay here if you want to play with your leg position. Feel free. I like to bend the knees up. And you'll notice I'm securing the block here so it doesn't slip. And then once I'm up, I'm pretty comfortable here. But your pose, your practice. One option is bringing the knee up towards the shoulder, taking the right leg up, rolling the ankle, and all of this is optional. What you do on one side, please do on the opposite side. Take 
taking the leg up if you choose and rolling the other ankle. And then enjoying the bridge, the supported bridge position for a few more breaths here. Deep breaths. So coming out of this, if you are on the highest level, you might want to just flip the block down. So coming out respectfully and then lifting the hips, taking the block out and letting the hips come back down. Stretch the legs out. Inhale the arms up over the head. Bring your right knee to the right shoulder. Interlace grip on top of the shin. Wind removing pose. Right foot can go into some range of motion. Active arms here in by the side. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulder all in one line. So the knee's not out to the side here. Although you are avoiding the rib cage, bringing it around the rib cage. Compressing the ascending colon on the right side. And releasing the right leg down. Opposite side, left knee up to the left side. Left side, you're compressing the descending colon. So this is very good for digestion. Range of motion in the foot, active arms here. See if you can feel the biceps bulging. Releasing the left leg down, taking another stretch, arms overhead. Bring both knees up, hugging around the shins. Maybe you can catch opposite elbows here that make sure you're in a tight little yoga ball. Bringing the head up towards the knees. Any pain in the neck, just leave the head down. Allow the head to come back down if it's not. Compressing the transverse colon with both knees up. Let's release your arms down. Bend the knees, open the feet, grab the sides. Happy baby. Rocking side to side. If happy baby doesn't work, whatever kind of rocking side to side feels good for you. Coming back to center, legs come down. Inhale, ar arms overhead. Deep breath. On the exhale, the arms float down. And then you have made it to Shavasana. So we're in corpse pose here. Palms are up. That will help with the sh open the shoulders. Let the shoulders tuck those shoulder blades under a bit. Heels together or slightly apart, feet fall open so the toes roll out, head heavy on the mat. While you're here, just rock the head side to side a couple of times, range of motion in the neck like we did to start, rotation of the cervical spine. Bring it back to center and you begin to breathe into Shavasana I'm going to grab some music for you. Feel the weight of your body. Sinking into the earth. Let the earth cradle you as you enjoy the stillness.
breath time is an invitation to slowly bring yourself back to your physical surroundings of the room. Small movements into the body. Marley breathing heavy. She had a very nice shavasana today. So remember as you come up, maybe rolling to the right, you have just added an hour of healthy living to your life. I can't prove it, I just know it's true. And I leave you with some Brian Andreas words. I don't know how long I can do this, he said. I think the universe has different plans for me. And we sat there in silence. And I thought to myself that this is the thing we all come to. And this is the thing we all fight. And if we are lucky enough to lose, our lives become beautiful with mystery again. And I sat there silent because that is not something that can be said. If we are lucky enough to lose, our lives become beautiful with mystery again. Very interesting. Brian Andreas. Inhaling prayer hands to the heart center and on the exhale bowing down sealing in your practice this morning sealing in anything learned anything gained The divine light and love in me bows to and honors the divine light and love in all of you always May love guide your way Thank you so much for joining us Namaste